The Frankie Files. As a survivor of a new age cult, I'm continuously looking for more information about what the heck it is. The most information I've found so far is from Dr. Wallach in her book, Bounded Choice, True Believers and Charismatic Cults. Today I'll be using the book, Bounded Choice, and quotes from Dr. Wallach about Heaven's Gate. New age isn't cute. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 51 of Frankie Files Podcast. I'm your host and producer, Frankie Tees. Heaven's Gate was a New Age California cult. This true crime story, the deadliest murder-suicide in U.S. history, the story of Heaven's Gate is worth revisiting. But through a New Age cult survivor's morning land eyes, it's super Similar. So the comments are from excerpts of Dr. Yanya Lalish's book, Bounded Choice True Believers and Charismatic Cults, 2004, University of California. Her knowledge is extensive. You see, she had already been in contact with former members for research in her sociology work and interviews, and she'd spoken with concerned family members and ex members about the cult. She told us in California that she had made the call to inform some family members that fateful day. That was in episode 30 of Frankie Files podcast, in case you would like to listen to that amazing interview. It happened one day in the California city of Rancho Santa Fe, March 26, 1997. Dr. Lalish is Professor Emeritus at UC Chico in California in the Department of Sociology. And she said that the leader called Doe, birth name Marshall Applewhite, had assured multiple times the group had no intention of committing suicide. This was important because a different American cult, Jonestown, had a mass suicide of 900 people in 1978. Everyone was concerned. But in 1985, the co-leader of Heaven's Gate, T, also known as Bonnie Nettles, died probably because her liver cancer, the book states, with multiple sightings. Like in the Morningland New Age cult, the death of the leader was kept secret. The death two years after she fell ill, which they kept hidden the whole time. Question, why do cult leaders hide ill health? Well, in this case, the second founder's death in Morningland Church, the ill health of Sri Donato was hidden, and she had a severe cough and health issues in her lungs. She even took codeine syrup for relief, I remember. Could it be it didn't fit with the all-knowing, all-seeing narrative a New Age leader sets up for themselves? Logic has no place in New Age doctrine. I found that out. Oh, Morningland believed in spaceships too. The logic that everyone dies of something is also something they don't seem to face. And when T died in the Heaven's Gate cult, it was explained by the new soul leader that her work was done and she was going to guide them from the next level. Okay, let's talk on that. This is the new age move. It's the go-to move. One leader dies, don't worry. They're on the spaceship and I can channel them. So many cults now channel dead members from the next dimension. The fourth way, Liana Shanti, Morningland, Love Has Won, Profundity Yours, even Scientology. As a cult kid, I'm continuously wondering how schizo people get into cult leadership and why adults believe them. At the time of his co-leader's death, Though Marshall Applewhite organized a ceremony of marriage to wed ritually complete with gold bands for he and all his loyal students. They were a commitment to each other and helped keep outsiders from hitting on them since they had a wedding band. It served to solidify any member's wavering commitment. But Dr. Lalish notes, like many New Age cults, the leader's 
death contradicts the entire belief system, but people still let it go, like in Morningland and in Scientology. If there's such great leaders, the tech of Scientology can cure anything. How come L. Ron Hubbard died? Lawler states, after all, for Nettles to die in her physical body, her human vehicle was counter to their teachings at that point. This death wedding ritual reminds me of the days of chanting when the male half of the leader of Morning Lamb died. The leader, sort of in the same position as Doe, told the congregation that the vortex Donato, who was the guy who just died, was closing. The vortex is closing by dark forces and the chanting would keep it open, allowing him to get aboard the spaceship hovering above. Once that was over, she announced that she was channeling her dead husband. This happened in recent years again with Love Has Won. It went like this. The female leader selling silver drinks to cure COVID. She was also ingesting those, that colloidal silver. And her um, co-leader who drove her to get the 5013C status, etc. He then kept it going after she died, saying he's channeling her, Amy, from the fifth dimension and she can still do the etheric surgery on people's organs from the fifth dimension. Emphasize here like how science fiction all of new age religion is. According to Yanya in the Bounded Choice book, she says new age beliefs vary widely making it difficult to characterize the movement as having one mission. The principles are a moral imperative, a demand for deep personal change, and reliance on the leader. Those are the characteristics. Related to Heaven's Gate, the moral imperative was guided not by a political vision, but a cosmic one, transcending daily life by tapping into the oneness of all existence, she says. That would do away with war, suffering, and earthly spoils. Gaining insight into oneself and the meaning of life, it could not be done on one's own. One needed to be reliant on a leader, a guru, a teacher, a spiritual being. Bounded Choice continues, these principles, the moral imperative, demand for change and reliance on leaders. These New Age trends were socio-cultural influences, including esoteric and Eastern philosophies, and technologies of change that revolved around methodologies of personal growth and self-awareness. More about New Age from Bounded Choice, it's been described as conspiracy and benign self-help movement. Oprah Winfrey has helped spread New Age concepts and beliefs. Public television would feature from Deepak Chopra to Wayne Dwyer. It's all-encompassing yet elusive in nature, and it includes Eastern mysticism, psychology, and spiritual techniques. The New Age bottom line can be stated in three words. All is one. The cosmos is pure, undifferentiated universal energy. A consciousness or life force. Everything is one vast interconnected process called the Age of Aquarius, inspired by Marilyn Ferguson's book, especially her book, The Aquarian Conspiracy. Lalish states that former members of Heaven's Gate mentioned the book in her sociology research interviews in California in the 90s. Lalish also calls it a vast shift in reality at the time. And I've since learned that the term New Age was first used in the Bible, quoting Jesus as ushering in the New Age. That I read from All You Want to Know But Didn't Think You Can Ask, De Vega and Garki. Jesus does seem to sneak into most of these New Age religions. Even the Carbon Nation cult believes their leader is the second coming. He just happens to be in jail. The idea that so many true crime fans, cult watchers, and others have only focused on the cute matching Nike sneakers chosen by these students of Heaven's Gate leaders is so beyond me. It's a lot like talking about my ex cult, Morningland, as though the children's book, Thinness, 
tortoise worship was the story or the giving bread out from the porch to keep their 501c3 status alive. New Age isn't cute. The leader of Love Has Won, now deceased, was dying right in front of her followers' eyes and YouTube viewers' eyes. Her skin was turning blue from drinking the colloidal silver. They even moved her body from California to Colorado, took her eyes out, mummified her in a sleeping bag, put Christmas lights around her, and continued worshiping her. There's really no floor and no ceiling on New Age, I think. And there's always secrecy, messing with your sexuality, and magical, logic-free thinking. Even in Heaven's Gate, the leaders believed being asexual was important to evolve. They called it the next level or home. They suppressed human emotions, Wallace states, especially anything to do with affection, sensuality, and sexuality. End quote. Many got vasectomies, but not before the group tried to do one on their own, a DIY a vasectomy on a male member, ending in an emergency room visit from their California estate home. They all took names like Chicote, Demote, Tarote, Tavote, and renamed daily things like Kitchen into names like Nutrolab or Laundry, the Fiber Lab. Nettles would claim she was receiving transmissions. There was mind reading, the group believed. You could maybe consider all this, if you didn't know it, ended in utter destruction. Cute. But the coerced suicide of almost 40 people, that kind of messes with the cute, doesn't it? I'm talking to you, true crime fans. Like many New Age religions, their ridiculous beliefs box the leader in to having to one-up themselves. Doe, a.k.a. Marshall Applewhite, was ill, and instead of going to the doctor for his heart disease, there was later rumors he had liver cancer, too. He chose to ignore that. Instead, he put an elaborate plan in place to stage all of their deaths, staging the mass suicide, and each member rehearsed their public goodbye for the video. And according to Bounded Choice Lalish's book, they then sent a FedEx package, the book reveals, in the chapter called Denouncement, to former members, sympathizers, and adherents, asking them to maintain the website and launch a media campaign. That boggles my mind. Among this last recorded words, quote, the world has become so corrupt that you have to do a media event, end quote. Marshall Applewhite. Members ingested a lethal mix of drugs and alcohol, and death was ensured by plastic bags over their head. Dr. Lalish calls what they did a bounded choice that was dictated by the same four stages we have seen at each stage of the cult's evolution, establishing charismatic authority, developing transcendent belief, instituting systems of control, Forming systems of influence. Well, this is why one of this show's focus is New Age religion. I include Scientology in New Age. It's a grifter's paradise. As a child victim of a very similar crazy New Age cult, seeing a sociologist like Dr. Lowish break down how and why it formed and keeps happening is so rewarding. And it shows me that the public clearly misunderstands New Age cults. A lot of people don't even know. Applewhite thought he was the second coming of Jesus Christ here to finish the job. I notice there's always the massive abuse of using other lives in any New Age cult too, in any psychic realm. It's totally conjecture. And I use 
to think this, you know, because I was indoctrinated as such. I was conditioned to believe anyone you meet, someone interesting, or there's a certain feeling, oh, I must have known you in a past life. What hooey. There's just an unlimited amount of stuff you could make up. Hey, L. Ron Hubbard was a sci-fi novelist, slave, before he became the cult leader we know today. And he's deceased, but plot after plot for dime store novels, one of them he turned into a cult. It's a sci-fi story. He's He lives on with his diamond-carved writings in deep vaults. Any human is capable of starting a cult. I know I could. I could successfully start a cult right now, the cult of no cults. And even if I went to great lengths to install uniqueness as an important community virtue, some would would eventually start worshiping me and it would go to my head and I would become a megalomaniac, narcissist. My inner circle would watch me die while vying for succession, the cult would live on like spam in space, ad nauseum, in some sort of self-protected vacuum. It's not cute. It's bonkers. And all we can do is educate the youth to the dangers of getting lured into a lecture, a pamphlet, a Facebook group, a Craigslist ad, a meetup group, or someone at the mall. Cults are out there. Cults, coercion, and sexuality in society. These are the topics for the Frankie Files. I'm Frankie Tease, your host, and I'll continue to focus on my own family story as well as news and recovery info for those who've survived, especially the adult children of cults. New each Tuesday. See FrankieFilesPodcast.com for more. Let me leave you with these paragraphs from Bounded Choice, True Believers and Charismatic Cults by Dr. Yanya Lalish. The Heaven's Gate organizational system, comprising charismatic authority, transcendent belief systems, systems of control, and systems of influence, relied on the rigid demand for a genderless existence, complete separation from the world, and total devotion to apple white and nettles. The group can easily be dismissed as bizarre. In viewing their exit statements, the androgynous and similar appearances of Applewhite and his followers and their speech are certainly strange. Yet it must be borne in mind that the group recruited followers during an era that promoted alternative lifestyle and cosmic possibilities, a worldview that has followed us into the new millennium. It's not surprising that those who joined latched onto the group's vision. Many of them have been questioning mainstream values and ways for some time and, for one reason or another, were unhappy with the status quo. No less important is the fact that much of their shared belief rested on images of good and evil, a compelling worldview embedded with otherworldly heroes and villains, virtues and vices. Members were choosing to be on the side of the angels, which meant that to not do so put one at great risk. This moral imperative was reinforced by a philosophy that encouraged hatred for the human self and the rest of the world and feelings of love and commitment narrowly focused on the leaders, the impossible ideal and the utopian vision. Together they formed a coherent vision of the world, a story to which members were wed, a narrative for which they lived and died within their own exercise of bounded choice. Thanks again for listening to Frankie Files podcast. Take a moment and subscribe and review the show so we can stick around. And always keep critical thinking. You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com